Hello everyone. In the previous session, we studied about first order and second order low pass filter and high pass filters. So now in this session, we'll be studying about band pass filters and band reject filters. In band pass filters, we have two categories. That is, first one is wide band pass filter, and second one is narrow band pass filter. And similarly, in case of band reject filters, we have wide band reject filter and narrow band reject filter. So before proceeding, we need to understand what a band pass filter is. So these are such type of filters in which only a particular or a selective band of frequencies will be passed and all the other frequencies beyond the selected band of frequencies will be attenuated. So each, each filter will have a quality factor Q otherwise called figure of merit which is denoted by Q and it is given by FC by bandwidth where FC is the center frequency and bandwidth we know that it is equal to FH minus FL where FH is high cutoff frequency and FL is low cutoff frequency and this center frequency is given by square root of the product of high cutoff frequency and low cutoff frequency. So this is about the wide band pass filter. And to just brief out a narrow band pass filter, the output voltage will peak at the center frequency. This is the key point that you are supposed to remember in case of narrow band pass filter. So we'll come to know about the actual circuit diagram and the frequency response in the upcoming uh, slide. So first, wide band pass filter. So this filter is formed by cascading a high pass filter and a low pass filter. It might be first order or second order. So if we use first order high pass filter we will have to use first order low pass filter itself in order to get a first order wide band pass filter so if we need a second order wide band pass filter what should we use to cascade we need to use second order high pass filter and second order low pass filter in order to get a second order wide band pass filter or plus or minus 40 dB per decade because it is second order. Since we are using first order high pass filter and low pass filter here, meaning the roll off factor will be plus or minus 20 dB per decade. This is known as plus or minus 20 dB per decade wide band pass filter. And this is the frequency response of the same where it is a plot of gain versus frequency. And here, maximum number of frequencies are passed. So this is the pass band. And here, it is a stop band below FL. And beyond FH also, it is a stop band. So it gradually attenuates the frequencies. Here, it is positive going. So it is plus 20 dB per decade meaning the roll of factor and here the roll of factor is minus 20 dB per decade. And the voltage gain magnitude of this filter is the product of voltage gain magnitude of high pass filter and low pass filter used. In the textbook they have directly given this equation. Just for your understanding I have written these intermediate steps. The voltage gain of the band pass filter is voltage gain magnitude of high pass filter into voltage gain magnitude of low pass filter and uh, high pass filter voltage gain magnitude is so much and with the low pass filter it is so much and product of this will yield this equation denoted by star where AFT is the total pass band gain of the filter this so here we have a problem to solve wherein uh, FL and FH are given 
high cutoff frequency and low cutoff frequency and the pass time gain meaning aft is equal to 4 we are supposed to draw the frequency response and we need to calculate the value of q that is center frequency by bandwidth it is simple direct substitution and calculation just go through and solve and after calculating make sure that you are not going to forget to write the circuit diagram for the respective filter that is asked in the question and the graph of the frequency curve you need to write it and uh, next we have narrow band pass filter this narrow band pass filter configuration is different from other filters in two aspects in all the other filters we used to use in op amp in non inverting mode but here the op amp is used in inverting mode as you can see here the input signal is given to the inverting input terminal and all the other op amps previously had only single feedback but this filter has multiple feedback you can see here this is one feedback path this is another feedback path so it has multiple feedback paths so this filter is unique in two aspects first one is it has multiple feedback paths and the op amp used here is inverting mode op amp and these filters are designed for specific values of center frequency and the quality factor q here in order to simplify the calculations the capacitors here c1 and c2 is equated to c and r1 is given by q by 2 pi fc into c c into af r2 is given by q by 2 pi fc cc into 2 q square minus af and r3 is given by q by pi fc into c and af is the gain at the fc so here this is the configuration of the narrow band pass filter okay here it has two feedback paths and the op amp is used in inverting mode and the non inverting terminal is grounded here this is the load resistance okay and this is the frequency response of the narrow band pass filter and the gain at the center frequency is given by AF and minus 3 dB that is 0 0.707 AF gain we'll get after coming down 3 dB value and with the, at the intersecting points of the frequency curve if we draw or extrapolation line to the x-axis we'll be getting high cutoff frequency and low cutoff frequency this is the basic thing that all of you are knowing and uh, this uh, f c is known as uh, center frequency and uh, here this f c we will have to change in some application so uh, let's say I will have to change this FC to a new value FC dash. So at that particular uh, instance, without changing the, the bandwidth or the gain of the filter, we can change the center frequency just by changing the value of R2 here, where the new value of R2 is given by R2 dash, that is equal to R2 into FC by FC dash whole square. And this is about the narrow band pass filters. And one more important thing is that the condition for 
the gain to be satisfied in this particular type of filters is it must be less than 2q square and here you have a problem to solve it is also same type as the previous uh, filters we did just substitution and calculation just try i have written the steps what you are supposed to do and uh, take uh, c1 and c2 equal to 0 0.01 microfarad and uh, for r1 r2 and r3 we already have uh, formulas just substitute the values and uh, calculate and r2 dash we know that it is equal to r2 into fc by fc dash whole square so you must be getting it as almost equal to 2.7 kilo and next we have band reject filters so in these we have wide band reject filter and narrow band reject filter so here it mainly rejects the filter uh, sorry frequencies so band reject filter it is mainly used to reject a particular or a selected band of frequencies which are not required okay so these are mainly used in communication and biomedical applications wherein we will have to attenuate a single frequency say 60 hertz so this is the configuration of the wide band reject filter sure this is the low pass filter you can see here we have r and c at the non inverting terminal and the input is also given to the non inverting terminal so this is low pass filter and here we have capacitor and a resistor in between the input signal and the non inverting terminal so this configuration forms a high pass filter and this is the summing amplifier here and this is the frequency response of wide band reject filter so the reject band will be more wider when compared to the narrow band reject filter and except for this band all the except for frequencies in this band all the frequencies will be passed by this filter and this fc is given by square root of product of fh and fl and this is about a wide band reject filter and now you have a problem to solve and this just try I've written all the steps just right if you have doubts please get it clarified this question is design a band wide band pass filter having fh equal to 2200 hertz and fl equal to 1 kilohertz with pass band, pass band gain of 2 so here we are considering c dash is equal to 0 0.05 microfarad c dash is in low pass filter and c in high pass filter as equal to 0 0.01 microfarad and we need to calculate the value of r so you must get it as equal to 15.9 kilo ohm and uh, assume that the section of high pass filter and low pass filter will have a gain of uh, to each so since it is in uh, non-inverting mode the gain will be equal to 1 plus rf pi r1 so this is equal to 2 which means rf by r1 is equal to 1 now if the gain of the summing amplifier is set to 1 go back to summing amplifiers and uh, check what happens to the value of the resistors r2 r3 and r4 that are used when gain is equal to 1 you will come to know that 
all those three are equal. So we have equated it to 10 kilo ohm. And uh, this resistor R O M here, it is given by the parallel combination of R3, R4, and R2. That is it about this. And the center frequency is uh, square root of FH into FL. And uh, coming to narrow band reject filters, it is also called notch filter. It is used to reject a single frequency such as 60 hertz. Sorry, in the wide band pass reject filter, so wide band reject filter, that filter is not used to reject a single frequency. It is used to reject a band of frequency. I mentioned it is. it can be used to reject a frequency of say 60 hertz, I think. So that is uh, not true in case of uh, wide band reject filter because the reject band is very much wider here because it is wide band reject filter. Whereas in case of narrow band reject filter, it is the frequency response is very much narrower when compared and only one frequency can be rejected in this filter okay and uh, here it mainly consists of uh, 20 notch filter here this this horizontal line and this vertical vertical line forms a t and this horizontal line and this vertical line forms another T, hence the name twin T notch filter. This first T will consist of two resistors and one capacitor. And in the second T, we have two capacitors and one resistor. And the here we, the frequency that is rejected is denoted by fn meaning notch filter notch fi notch out frequency it is also called notch filter hence the name notch out frequency here yeah. this is given by 1 by 2 pi rc and this filter also makes use of the op amp in the non inverting mode and uh, this 20 notch component is used here okay and this is the frequency response of the narrow band reject filter the figure of merit that is uh, q is very small with uh, this filter but it can be used with the use of voltage divider as it is shown here okay this is mainly used in biomedical applications and uh, communications. And uh, this is the design part wherein uh, we are uh, choosing a value for C uh, such that it is lesser than or equal to one microfarad. And next is we are supposed to calculate the value of R by considering this value of C from this equation, Fn is equal to one by two pi. RC. This Fn will be given in the question itself. Say here, for example, design a 60 hertz active notch filter. This 60 hertz itself is the notch frequency. Meaning this particular frequency should be rejected by the filter. And this one more question, design a notch filter to eliminate 120 hertz is given as an assignment. Please try solving it. So this is it for this session and we'll continue with Model 5 in the next session.